Hi. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Oh, I want to thank you for the um, shucking and jiving metaphor. Something became so clear for me in that moment because that's a tradition that comes out of slavery. Mm -hmm. I realized, oh, that's when we are completely enslaved to our egos. Ah, that yeah. Moment, which I really loved. Yeah. Um, so, so much of my journey up until this point spiritually has been about coming to believe in a universe that loves me and wants what's best for me. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I'm at war right now a little bit with my God concepts. I'll bet. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I feel like, no, you, you know, when I was listening yeah. to you just now, I thought, well, maybe that's really appropriate because I'm in that stage of my life where I'm supposed to be building and sort of, you know, structuring my life and blooming, as you talked about yesterday, which I feel like I'm really doing uh -huh. really beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, I feel like, you know, in order to really be in truth, I have to be willing to surrender to this idea that I don't know what God wants for me. That's, yeah. that's it, isn't it? Yeah. That's it. Because that that's is the that. truth. Because we don't know, do we? <sighs> we really don't know. Except whatever's happening, that's it. <laughs> that's as much as we know. What does God want? This right now. How do I know? Because this is what's happening right now. <laughs> that's the one undeniable thing, isn't it? Is right now. Is right now. Beyond that, it's unknown. And the amazing thing is when we consciously allow it to be what it is, allow it all to be unknown, that's where real, there's an ability, there's an accessibility, there's, there's magic that happens there. There's, there's the possibility of, a, of transformation simply because we open to everything being unknown. Hmm. It's the relinquishing of control, really. I think, it's, I think it's scary because the last time that I felt like I didn't know was when I believed that, you know, that the universe didn't want what was best for me, that I was destined right. to live a life of suffering, that I right. didn't deserve good. Right. So at that time, so you did, or consciousness did through you, mm -hmm. it did what served you. You were on one extreme feeling the universe didn't care about you and didn't want anything and didn't, maybe didn't value you. And so what do you need to do to counter that? Of course, it's totally appropriate. You mm -hmm. counter it with the universe loving you and having a wonderful plan for you and all of that. And that's entirely appropriate, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's meant to count. It's like an energy counters the other. And then, of course, you're here, which tells me the fact that you're here is this swing has started, it's played its part out, right? It's brought you to a more stable place. I mean, it's a much better place to feel like the universe cares and God's loving, God has a plan for you, than, than, than it just doesn't give a damn at all, mm -hmm. right? And so you've, you go there, and that's so you've experienced this, the two poles of duality, right? It cares and it doesn't. Hmm. But truth is not really ever found in these dualistic points of view. Truth is this, which encompasses them. And the access to that is that it's a mystery. That's the access point. And so what does that surrender look like for me? I mean, does it mean taking time every day to not know? I mean, what, what does it look just like? Not, just don't know all the time. <laughs> well, that's a lot to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it true? Yes. I mean, we're not talking like high spiritual stuff now, right? Yeah. It sounds very spiritual, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. The unknown. <laughs> but really, when you get down to it, you realize, I don't actually know. Come on, let's cop to it. I don't know how the world should be. I don't know how I should be. I don't really know what's right and what's wrong because so much in our life that we would say was wrong and I didn't want it to happen are the very things that led 
to a deeper state of consciousness, aren't they? Often it's pain and suffering and hardship that's an intimate part of the progress of our lives, as well as the good stuff. So we really don't, at any, but we would have said that shouldn't happen, that was wrong. So when we start to see, we don't actually know, do we? What should be happening, what shouldn't be happening, who the good people are, who the bad people are. When we get outside of our minds, outside of thought, it all disappears, doesn't it? Hmm. So when I say we're not knowing, I say it's more like we just admit that everything we think we know is just a thought. How do we make decisions then? What seems to be the thing to do. Hmm. And then we just trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, it's a lot easier when you make, when it comes to a decision point, and you go, okay, let's start with the truth. I cannot know what's the absolute right decision. So mm -hmm. let's just stop faking it. Let's stop even looking for absolute knowledge. That's a big burden that's left. Lift it off. Okay, I can't know for sure. Now, what seems to be the thing to do? Hmm. And then it, it's kind of obvious. <laughs> but if you impose, do I know this is the right thing? Do I know this is the best thing? You'd never know. Because that's not how anything works, do you? Hmm. But you just go, I can't know with any absolute certainty. And in the willingness to, go, to know that you can't know with absolute certainty, the next thing to do is very obvious. Hmm. It's these burdens we impose, our minds impose upon ourselves. I must know for sure. But you never know for sure. Remember all the times you knew for sure? <laughs> <laughs> Remember all the times? I mean, you get a job, you go, this is it, I know, this is it, you know, and then six months later, you're trying to get the hell out as fast as you can. <laughs> or I met the perfect guy or the perfect woman, he's it, she's it, oh my God, my soulmate, and then, you know, a, a, a year and a half later, you're wondering how you can get their fo your phone number back from them. <laughs> or, or whatever, it, you know, it goes on and on and on. Yeah. So even with these m so many moments of absolute sureness, it's so obvious that we never really know. Every once in a while, one in ten times, what we think we know actually works out the way we expect it. And our minds uses that one out of ten times to say, ah, <laughs> See? <laughs> see? I can know. And I did know. Yeah. And it forgets the nine times that you thought you knew with just as much certainty, but then life changed, and it, it danced, and it changed directions. This is the last part of the question. When I hear you say that, I also think about yesterday when you talked about you know, the world being a duplicating machine. Yes. And so it makes me wonder if, if I don't need to have more responsibility in making sure that the messages I send out are loving and positive and beautiful, so that that is what's duplicated back to me. Um, well, you could. <laughs> but let's look at it, right? Uh -huh. now, I'm not saying this with any judgment, right? but it's self-centered. Mm. So I'm going to put out loving things so they come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Which isn't, I'm not saying it's bad or wrong in any way. I mean, if I had the choice, I would love people to put out more more love and more joy and more honesty, whether they were awake or not, right? Mm -hmm. Seemed to make a nice world. So that's, there's, I don't have a problem with that. But, but the motivation comes I, from Well, control. it's just that I'm like a truth guy. That's, that's my job, right? I'm We've a, noticed. Yeah. <laughs> my function is like an awakening guy, mm -hmm. right? Consciousness becoming fully white, spirit, God, call it what you will. Right? So... One can do that, and that's, that's fine if, if you want to do that. But there's also something deeper. There is something deeper when we really let it all go. Only then do we come upon, well, what my friend before, was just talking about. Not only this love that's causeless, 
and it comes out of you for no reason, not in order to get back, but for no reason. That's the most beautiful discovery is this threatening thing that I call emptiness, right? The void. But when we realize that to be the essence of our own being, the byproducts of that, the first manifestations of the void are a causeless love, a love with no agenda. It's like a love because we just love. And there seems to me there is no greater gift than that love where there's no agenda. We're not loving to get it back. We're not loving to make sure our life looks good. We're loving because we're full. You see? And there's just an overflow of being. We have more of ourselves than we ever need. Will your li Does life tend to look a lot better and feel better? Absolutely. But if the, f the paradox is, is we get there by letting go of the motivation for it to look better and feel better. Letting go of that last little bit of control. So the most beautiful thing about you can really flow. Thanks. Enjoy yourself. Mm, you too. All right. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Come on up. Yeah. It's always tricky when I answer questions because everything you said, you see, each step you mention, it's a beautiful thing to be doing, right? These intentions are really beautiful. So when I speak, I always want it to make clear that I'm not saying don't do them or counter to them. To me, it's just all a developmental movement. You move, move, move. You do those things. You be loving, you be loving, you believe. And then the next step. And the next step is an absolute step. The next step is like, I say, a swan dive into the unknown. It's like step, 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 step. No more steps. Swan dive. Or go back and just make more steps. <laughs> right? Horizontal movements along the void, you know? <laughs> Which is okay. And each of those steps is okay, too. They're all appropriate. But... Once you get to here now, you'll always feel the invitation. Let it all go. See what happens. <laughs>